Yes, good morning everyone. Good morning, sir. Okay, so <clears throat> this is orientation session for geography, internal security, environment and ecology, and disaster management part of our syllabus. Okay, so uh, for in the first lecture, Ansari sir has guided you overall how to prepare for this examination. Yesterday, uh, uh, Mohamed Jia sir has guided you for history part. Now we are moving on uh, to these orientation sessions, the next part. So first of all, I will introduce myself. My name is Lakshmi Kant and I'm here faculty at Lukman IS, uh, associated since last five years. And I will be guiding you throughout the preparation of this examination for these subjects. Okay, <clears throat> so first of all, let us uh, have, let's say, interaction related to uh, why you chose this examination. First of all, ye kafi important hum bolte ki uh, zaruri hota hai ki uh, we understand the intention. Okay, so this is the philosophy that you should also adopt in your life whenever you decide something. I say this as a WH type of question the concentric circles okay so at the center of any decision you should question yourself why why you decided to prepare for civil services first of all you should ask this question yourself second is related to what that means once you have decided you are going to prepare for this examination then what is this preparation? Thereafter, you will ask yourself this question that what we are supposed to prepare here. And there we will ask ourselves question of how we are going to prepare this. So why I am asking this? Because when this is strong, the other two things are possible. So first of all, I would like to know from your side why you decided to you know opt for civil services as the career option yes you can share your thoughts brother yeah so when i see syllabus of men's then it, uh, i feel very attracted towards it because there was uh, lots of things which i earlier wanted to know there was everything so i decided to bless okay just to gather information just to know the things? Yes, sir. Okay, not long term motive? To know about yes. Our yes, you can, you can share anything. Don't worry about the, let's say, I will not judge any of you. Don't worry. Teacher, do not judge the students. Okay, yes. Okay, yes. So you, you have this motive in your mind to you to do better for society, to bring some change in the society, positive change in the society. Good thing, yes. Sir, I want to be a public servant from beginning because my family has been in this for a lot of time. Okay. Okay, so yes, there is some kind of familiarity. Okay, and that motivates you to join civil services. Yes, you ma'am. Okay, then someone else asked you to do this? Okay, okay, okay. Yes, online students, you can share your thoughts one by one. Why you decided to join civil services as, let's say, as a career option? Why you decided for this? Yes? So it is the most satisfying job in the entire country. Okay, so satisfying. Job satisfaction. One of the motivation. Yes, true. Other students? Why we are talking about this? Let me tell you this. Okay, so yes, oh, some of the students are having the job satisfaction. Some students say that there is background at home. Some students say that they want to bring some change in the society. See, this is very important question because the, you are entering long journey of preparation. And 
there will be several steps, stages in this examination. There may be failure also. But when you have very strong motivation, the internal motivation, not external motivation. When you have strong, long-standing motivation, you will sustain till the end. That's why we are talking about this. And when we have right cause to enter into this examination, then that will provide you long-term motivation. See, this is to be decided by you. And in other two things, we are here to guide you. What includes in the other things? What? That means, what is the nature of this examination? What is the syllabus of the examination? This is what we are talking, what? This question. Once we decided to choose this career, then how to, or let's say, what to prepare here? That is syllabus of this examination, nature of this examination. And that, for that purpose, we will guide you in that direction. And the third one, once you understand the syllabus and nature of the examination, then how to prepare for it? How to prepare for this examination? So next 11 month journey for the foundation batch is all about these two. And this is externally will be provided to you. Are you understanding this? See, from time to time, we will also provide motivation. But when you have internal motivation, that's like motivational movie. We are in Josh, we are starting to study, we are trying to do passion, we are trying to achieve passion, right? But that is temporary. After two days, that will subdue. Okay, when you have internal motivation, that helps you for this long-term journey because this is going to be your, you know, uh, <clears throat> several stages are there, three stages are there. And for that purpose, you require the motivation. Now, Yes, coming back to the topics that we are going to discuss, especially now, what and how. And that is, we will talk only about these subjects because different faculties are providing you guidance in this week. Okay, so first of all, let us talk about geography. So I will ask you <clears throat> that how many of you did like geography in school days, did not like geography as in the school days? You liked? I never liked. Never liked. Why? Oh, oh. So, do you the Okay. So, yes. Basically, yes. Why do you like geography? Because of maps and all that. Okay. You like maps. You like diagrams or let's say charts. Okay. So, yes. In geography, what we are supposed to learn here is nothing but up to 12 standard CBSC level or NCRT level syllabus. Okay, in general studies, whatever the syllabus that is mentioned, it does not require specialization. It is that's why named general studies. Okay, so you require some basic understanding of geographical concepts and that will help you clear this examination. Okay. But before, you know, going into details, I will show you the syllabus. Okay. First of all, I will show you the syllabus of geography. See here. So geography is for both prelims as well as mains examination. It is part of both stages. And in prelims examination, see what is the statement of the syllabus. Indian and world geography. In that physical, social, economic geography of India as well as world. Only one line statement of the syllabus. It is not descriptive syllabus. So many times students do not understand what to read and what not to read. It is very important. And how do we understand this from previous year questions? How UPC has asked Questions from geography section in last 20-30 years. When we look into these questions, we understand the nature of questions asked by UPSC. The difficulty level of those questions we understand. And accordingly, we need to prepare for this examination. Okay, so here onwards, you should keep this in mind. There are two important guidelines for you for next 
11 months okay what what are these guidelines or we can say two important torch that you should keep yourself on your table one syllabus and other previous year questions this will help you your preparation keeping in a streamlined manner in a one single dedicated channel otherwise there are a lot of distractions here in the market if you visit a bookstore in delhi you will find so many notes of different institutions different books you will find but we don't want to do phd or post graduation in these subjects we only want to clear this and clear this examination and that's why we require dedicated preparation now on this syllabus i want uh, so let's say want to discuss some examples the questions that are asked in the prelims examination okay simultaneously i will talk about mains also then we will take other subjects okay i will give you book list also how to prepare this subject also but first of all we are you know getting acquainted with what kind of questions are asked okay so yes <clears throat> so we can talk about this so if we talk about last year question paper see this is the trend there are total 100 questions asked in the prelims examination in gs paper and in that geography carries the substantial weightage you can see the number of questions around 15 questions asked are every year from geography section since 2013 we have given this trend of geography mcqs asked in the prelims examination you can see here it is between 10 to 15 okay sometimes it is asked more than 15 16 18 you can see so it is substantial weightage given to geography part in prelims examination to aisa to nahi hai ki hum ek koi subject eliminate kar de preparation aur hum pass ho jayenge geography is not that subject okay we have to prepare for this the other advantage is that there is substantial syllabus in mains examination also so we should prepare in a simultaneous manner we should prepare the same concept from prelims perspective as well as mains perspective okay so let's see what what is the nature of question asked in the prelims examination first of all ncert based questions hum isi saal ka prelims ka paper dekhenge kis tarike se question aaya in ncert based question look at the example This is the map given in 11 standard NCERT page number 22 and look at the question with reference to Indus river system with reference to Indus river system of the following four rivers three of them pour into one of them which joins the Indus directly little bit confusing statement but if we know or have read this map we can easily attempt this see of the following four rivers three of them pour into one of them in charon mein se teen aise river jo hai wo chauthe mein drain hoti hai aise kaun si rivers hai generally we know about these rivers when they are in india and these rivers are later entering into pakistan the indus river system we learn this in school also we learn this in school also so you can see here jhelum chinab and ravi are meeting each other and draining into satluj here so you can see satluj is separate river and jhelum chinab ravi together are draining into satluj when we interpret this question it becomes very simple are you getting this so this is how we have to observe this river map also yes please mute your mic only unmute it when you ask question theek hai yes whenever you want to ask question you can ask in between also or in comment box also yes <clears throat> so this is one of the question we are talking other ncert based question we can also talk about 
ये भी हमने स्कूल में पढ़ा है सी सेवन स्टैंडर्ड एनसीआर टी आवर हैबिटेट दिस इज आस्क इन यूपीसी प्रिलिम्स एग्जामिनेशन आई एम टॉकिंग दिस ईयर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन विथ रेफरेंस टू वॉटर ऑन द प्लेनेट अर्थ कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट द अमाउंट ऑफ वॉटर इन द रिवर्स एंड द लेक इज मोर देन अमाउंट ऑफ ग्राउंड वॉटर amount of water in the rivers and lake is more than amount of ground water see there is one table in that 7 standard ncert and this table is giving the percentage of amount of water on the earth surface majority of them we know 70 97% is in the oceans and remaining 3% is fresh water and within that it is divided like ice caps is the 2% majority of the remaining water is in ice cap in the polar region and on the mountains glaciers then ground water 0.68 now this is asking the amount of water in rivers and lakes together is more than amount of ground water ground water 0.68% fresh water lakes and rivers 0.001 fresh water 0.009 it is very less as compared to ground water so amount of water in rivers is more than more than kaise ho sakta hai it is incorrect it is less than amount of ground water incorrect ho gaya hai first statement then the amount of water in polar ice caps and glaciers is more than amount of ground water this is correct because it is ice caps 2% ground water 0.68% see it is given in 7 standard ncert and one can easily attempt this question when we read this maps and tables and information given in basic ncert books so you can understand from this geography is that kind of subject when we understand the concept different geographical phenomenon and learn to read the map it's very easy to prepare for this examination we are talking about prelims examination Yes, Ashutosh. Tell me. Yeah, I am saying there is NCERT is enough to tackle the question of UPSC standard. We will talk about that also. Yes. Yes, yes. We will talk that ab about that also. Okay. I will give you book list in the end. I will talk about whether it is completely sufficient to only read NCERT or we have to you know refer to any reference book like G C Leong or any other book. i will talk about that okay ashutosh yes okay, yes 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 so such kind of question again we can talk about one more example black soil everyone knows about black soil we learn this in ncert school level now what is the question black cotton soil of india has been formed due to weathering of which type of rocks or simply we can say brown forest soil fissure volcanic rock granite and schist shale and limestone now we know that black cotton soil is found in which state largely in india where maharashtra deccan plateau black cotton soil is famous there and this soil is formed in deccan plateau means deccan plateau was formed through volcanic eruption and because of weathering of that rock this soil is formed so fissure volcan it is given in 10th standard ncert page number 10 page number 8 the climatic conditions along with parent rock material are important factors for the formation of black soil parent rock what is parent rock typical of deccan trap basalt region spread over northwest plateau made up of lava flows so basically it is volcanic rock lava means what volcanic rock okay so basically i am giving this these examples to let you understand the nature of questions now map based questions just now i told you map based questions are asked every year one or two minimum questions are related to mapping so we ask student to prepare mapping section after you know by preparing atlas okay so everyone is supposed to buy the atlas and every day you should dedicate half an hour in map reading i will explain how to do that but i will also uh, let you know what kind of question is asked from the mapping part 
see here rivers consider the following rivers brahmani nagavali subarna rekha vamsadhara which of the above rise from eastern ghats okay so this question was asked in 2021 prelims examination now if the student is doing the map reading part of indian rivers from the atlas he will easily mark this question correct okay so these are east flowing rivers of india and their names is mentioned in ncert see 11th standard ncert drainage pattern the uh, chapter topic ड्रेनेज सिस्टम सुवर्ण रेखा बैतरणी ब्राह्मणी वंशधारा पेन्नार सो दीज रिवर्स नेम्स आर मेन्शन देर सो वॉट इज द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी हियर लुक एट द ओरिजिन ऑफ दीज रिवर्स ऑन द मैप कहाँ से ओरिजिन हो रहे वेस्टर्न घाट से ईस्टर्न घाट से हिमालय से कहाँ से ओरिजिन हो रहे उसके बेसिस पे तो क्वेश्चन पूछा है द क्वेश्चन इज आस्ट ऑन दैट बेसिस ओनली okay and simply if the student have look at the map they will find that brahmani and suvarna rekha river they are on the upper side nagavali and vamsadhara on the bottom side and they are basically originating from eastern ghats suvarna rekha flows through jharkhand if student knows about this okay the tisco plant tata plant is located along the suvarna rekha river झारखंड में जो है ठीक है सो so, झारखंड जो है या जो हम बोलते हैं कि रांची प्लेटू दिस इज नॉट पार्ट ऑफ ईस्टर्न घाट बेसिकली ईस्टर्न घाट स्टार्ट फ्रॉम ओडिशा एंड देयर साउथ वर्ड्स सो इफ यू एलिमिनेट दिस थ्री फ्रॉम योर आंसर ये तो दो चले गए ठीक है तो बचता है एक वन एंड टू टू एंड फोर ओके सो इन दिस टू वी हैव टू फाइंड द करेक्ट आंसर so elimination method is also very important from the available knowledge we can eliminate that no this is not the correct then remaining will become correct this elimination method we have to apply in prelims examination so as to get the correct answer okay such kind of map based question so how to prepare for the mapping part world and india mapping okay so all places oceans and bordering countries rivers and oceans into which they flow into mountain ranges hills plateaus lakes especially those mentioned in ncert you have to locate them on the map and then it will be directly asked in directly or indirectly asked in the question okay then study and observe atlas daily for a half an hour kya karna hai आपको ऑक्सफोर्ड या स्टूडेंट एटलास जो है वो खरीदना है ब्लैक 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 स्वान या ऑक्सफोर्ड का कंपनी का वो खरीदना है स्टूडेंट एटलास ओके एंड डेली फॉर हाफ एन आवर इवनिंग में बोर हो गए और शाम को चाय पी रहे हो ठीक है उसके बाद में दिन भर पढ़ाई करके क्लासेस करके बोर गए हो थक गए हो सो ओपन द एटलास एंड जस्ट ऑब्जर्व वन एट मैप ऑन वन पेज फॉर हाफ एन आवर वॉट यू नीड टू ऑब्जर्व देखिए कहाँ पे रिवर कौन सी रिवर जा रही है कौन से ओशन में वो जा रही है कहाँ से ओरिजिनेट हो रही है विच आर द डिफरेंट माउंटेन रेंजेस ऑन दैट कॉन्टिनेंट इन दैट कंट्री सो फॉर हाफ एन आवर यू ओनली ऑब्जर्व वन मैप एंड यू डू दिस डेली प्रैक्टिस इट इज इंटरेस्टिंग टू नो द जोग्राफिकल फीचर्स है ना बचपन में डिस्कवरी चैनल देखा होगा ना नेट जियो डिस्कवरी आई गेस एवरी वन वॉज इंटरेस्टेड इन दैट है ना सो बेसिकली इट इज जोग्राफी ओनली ओके सो दिस इज हाउ वी शुड प्रिपेयर एंड लुक फॉर ऑल प्लेसेस एंड फीचर्स इन न्यूज ऑल्सो सो मेनी टाइम्स सम लेक्स सम रिवर्स सम माउंटेन रेंजेस विल बी न्यूज फॉर सम रीजन और अदर दे कैन बी आस्ट इन द क्वेश्चन ओके सो दिस इज फ्रॉम करंट अफेयर्स so mapping is static as well as from current affairs this is how we need to deal with these type of questions now other types of question for geography coming back to the nature of questions see here current affairs based questions 
okay the other questions like upc trained based questions and miscellaneous question so i will briefly tell you the examples and then we can move on to how to prepare here see upc trained how to understand from previous year questions how to predict the next year question also every year upc ask map based question and within that map based question upc has come up with this trend of asking lakes 2018 which of which one of the following is an artificial lake 2019 what is common to the places known as aliar isapur kangsabati these are reservoirs man made lakes reservoirs after building dam across the river there is a huge reservoir basically these are reservoirs okay so you can see here water reservoirs so it is man made lake it is kind of man made lake so look at this question with reference to india didwana kuchaman sargol khatu 2021 prelims examination basically these are saline lakes of rajasthan ठीक है सो दिस ट्रेंड वी अंडरस्टैंड दैट यूपीएससी इज इंटरेस्टेड इन आस्किंग मैप बेस्ड क्वेश्चन ऑन लेक्स रिवर्स एंड मे बी नेक्स्ट ईयर ऑल्सो दे विल आस्क इन अ डिफरेंट मैनर बट ऑन द सेम टॉपिक लेक्स सो आई विल प्रिपेयर इंपॉर्टेंट लेक्स ऑफ वर्ल्ड एज वेल एज इंडिया दिस इज हाउ वी कॉन्सेंट्रेट ऑन इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ आवर प्रिपरेशन अदरवाइज देर आर लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स टू प्रिपेयर बेसिकली it is said that for upsc everything under sun can be asked so kuch bhi pucha ja sakta hai aise wo puchte hai but simply we should understand that okay one of the student is saying sir the coaching will be pure english medium only yes the coaching is in english medium let me be very clear okay coaching is in english medium because all of you are going to give this examination in english medium only okay so don't worry about that basically in in between we talk in hindi language simply to explain some concepts some students may not understand but of course that will be after explaining english okay so don't worry about that yes so these are trend based questions conceptual understanding so geographical phenomenons we have to understand and then only you can solve this question so what are tropical westerlies or we simply we can understand tropical or trade winds westerly winds or ocean currents how they flow the factors responsible for their movement modification all these concepts we have to understand then only we can attempt this question now there is one caveat caveat in terms of many students will be thinking sir we will read ncert what is need of joining coaching class everyone will think like that up to 12th standard we can easily understand but the problem with geography is that the 11th and 12th standard ncerts provide information but they are not self explanatory many of the concepts given in ncert they are not self explanatory so you will require guidance from the faculty in understanding of these concepts and student find it difficult to understand geography concepts okay this is the major concern and here comes the role of faculty okay so this is about geography prelims examination now you have understood how to you know the nature of questions that are being asked quickly we can also have look at geography gs1 paper mains syllabus now it is descriptive so many points are mentioned when the descriptive syllabus is given it is always good for student why because there is direction for preparation because upsc will ask something related to this when only one line is written physical social economic geography what about within that anything can be asked but here for mains examination always the question relates to specific point of the syllabus and we'll talk about those questions also 
see the syllabus salient features of world physical geography now we learn features of physical geography here in prelims also so it is overlapping part physical geography of india and world can be asked in mains as well as prelims examination so we will prepare it in you know keeping this in mind that it can be asked in the prelims as well as mains examination but distribution of key resources re natural resources across the world including south asia and indian subcontinent so natural resources like for example coal reserves crude oil reserves other minerals and their reserves in india as well as world okay this distribution generally is this this topic is largely limited to mains examination although it is given in ncrt related to distribution of natural resources and we have to just read for prelims also but the questions they focus largely on mains examination okay distribution of resources then factors responsible for location of primary secondary and tertiary sector industries for example primary industry agro based industries okay lumbering agriculture basically these are primary industries the factors for location like coffee industry is there tea industry is there these plantations are there why tea plantations are limited to darjeeling and assam hills only in india the factors geographical factors climate is there soil is there and we can say the early start by the british government at that time capital investment the cheap labor availability all these are factors responsible for location of this industry why certain industries locate near the market why certain industries locate near the raw material supply such kind of let's say locations we have to identify for those industries now it is limited to mains examination it is largely limited to mains examination only we will see the nature of questions that are asked on this syllabus important geophysical phenomena such as earthquake tsunami volcanic activity cyclone now these are natural phenomena they are also natural hazards they are also natural hazards so every year upsc will ask one question related to this landslide earthquake cyclone tsunami every year upsc will ask now this is also part of gs3 paper disaster and disaster management but there is fine difference between these two what is the difference natural hazard is natural process okay we will call it as a natural hazard unless it is not harming human habitations and property it will remain natural hazard for example at present which cyclone is getting near to east coast of india if you are reading newspaper yes online students which cyclone is nearing east coast of india yes very good cyclone asani a s a n i okay this tropical cyclone every year they originate in bay of bengal they come near the eastern coast of india many of them make landfall on the coastal andhra pradesh or odisha region or even west bengal also now this is natural hazard but when it impacts human lives and property that becomes natural disaster so when we learn this tropical cyclone as a phenomenon as a natural hazard that becomes gs1 geography but when we learn from disaster management perspective how to reduce the impact of tropical cyclone on human lives and property that becomes disaster management and that is gs3 paper part of our syllabus okay so question can be asked in gs1 as well as gs3 but the matter is to be written in answer in mains examination is different wahan pe hame disaster management ki baat karni hai we have to write about disaster management in gs3 paper in gs1 paper we have to write it from geographical perspective only okay 
then last one geographical features and their location like changes in geographical features including water bodies ice caps melting of glaciers melting of polar ice caps their impact ye sari cheeze wahan pe puchi jayegi now briefly we'll have look at questions asked in 2021 mains examination in january month is saal jab january mein mains hua tha uske kya questions the so briefly we'll have a look at that also look at these questions you tell me the syllabus point of first question Differentiate causes of landslides in Himalayan region and Western Ghats. It is part of that natural hazard syllabus topic, landslide, and it is clearly asking causes. Causes of landslide, and we have to differentiate causes of landslide in Himalayan region. And if you have read eleven standard NCERT. there is one box explaining this answer of this question directly directly i will say directly ek box mein unhone differentiate kiya hai what is the differentiation here the steep slopes of himalayas comparative to western ghats okay so there is high we can say very steep slopes in himalayas at the same time they are loosely bound sediments in himalayas compared to western ghats okay at the same time you should understand the amount of rainfall in himalayas and in western ghat in western ghat it is concentrated in four months of monsoon period western slope of western ghats but in himalayas it is uniformly distributed okay so in this manner we should understand the causes and we have to differentiate theek hai to wo directly aapko ncert se answer mile you will directly find the answer in ncert for this question look at the next what are the environmental implications of reclamation of water bodies into urban land use urban water bodies like urban lakes urban lakes why it is in use in many cities there is encroachment of urban bodies for let's say construction of houses or other infrastructure projects and because of that it is reducing its carrying capacity it is leading to urban floods what happened in 2020 hyderabad what happened in 2015 chennai floods what happened in 2005 mumbai floods these urban floods are result of encroachment on urban lakes we can say okay and because of that these urban floods are happening see what are the environmental implications they are asking so last topic last part of syllabus changes in the different features geographical features and their impact this is the syllabus topic see mention the global occurrence of volcanic eruptions in 2020 again natural hazards and their impact on regional environment again we can say same type of syllabus topic but it is directly we can say to the current affairs global occurrence of volcanic eruption in 2021 matlab wo last one year mein in 2021 year different volcanic eruptions happened okay and those we have to mention here and their impact environmental impact impact on human habitations this is what we have to write in this answer okay so now you have understood see physical geography briefly mention the alignment of major mountain ranges of the world and explain their impact on local weather conditions with example major mountain ranges you can give three four major examples including himalayas what is the alignment of himalayas broadly it is east east west direction same is the case with alps in europe east west direction what about rockies and andes they are south so north north south direction rockies in north america andes in south america north south direction they impact the local weather condition in a very specific manner for example himalayas itself acts as a climate divide 
why we do not experience severe winter during the winter time because himalayas obstruct the cold winds from central asia during the winter time this is the weather impact the chinook local winds of rockies in north america they provide relief they are called as ice eater why because these are warm winds and they melt the ice during winter exposing grass helping local herders to you know uh, let graze their sheep there during winter also it comes as a relief such kind of things are mentioned in ncert as well as some reference book now you can understand from mains perspective you have to go beyond ncert you have to go beyond ncert one of the student asked just now so whether ncert will be sufficient so for prelims examination i would say when you understand the concepts ncert is sufficient reading ncert is sufficient but for mains examination you have to go beyond ncert here comes again the role of faculty classroom classroom learning we can say okay for example the locations of industries and all these aspects like discuss the multi dimensional implications of uneven distribution of mineral oil in world distribution of resources is the syllabus topic it is asking distribution of mineral oil now these answers may not be there in ncert for each and every mineral we are talking each and every natural resource we are talking and for that purpose in classroom we will learn about all these resources so all these questions came in one year only yes upsc gs1 paper geography part carries the weightage of around 75 to 100 marks variation is observed last year around 100 marks question out of 250 was for geography so nearly 40% nearly 40% we can say so it is substantial amount and let me tell you geography will help you fetch maximum mark why it's objective in nature once you understand the concept you get full marks but other are very descriptive in nature history society in gs1 paper you have to elaborate on different aspects yahan pe aapko pata hai aap likh dijiye hmm yes i will tell about that when we are talking about resources now we will shift towards the resources only that uh, which books you have to read for preparing geography part <coughs> first of all 6 to 10 standard ncert see i am giving you very standard book list okay so once you read this uh, let's say books specifically for prelims and mains examination that is sufficient why i am differentiating 6 to 10th and then 11 to 12th 4 ncerts first you read 6 to 10th in sequential manner first you read 6 to 10th in sequential manner then only you take uh, 11th standard ncert for reading do not directly jump for 11th standard you will not understand many concepts there okay 6 to 10th standard will create your foundation it will give brief idea about india and world geography okay and it is very lucid language you will learn you will understand everything by yourself largely up to 10th standard but the problem may occur in 11th and 12th standard 11th standard ncerts two ncerts are related to physical geography physical geography of world physical geography of india two ncerts 11th standard and this 12th standard two ncerts human and economic geography human and economic geography of world and india two ncerts yes human geography is part of our syllabus yes it is part of our syllabus 
okay when we say human geography it will include we can say cultural geography it will include demographic geography okay population related attributes so it is given in ncrt and it is part that yes so do we need uh, gc dome for climate yes yes i i'm i'm going to talk about the third one as gc leon okay this gc leon certificate in physical geography name of the book see once you read all these ncrts 6 to 12th and understand all the concepts then only you take this book for reading then only you take this book for reading again i am repeating you read up to 12th standard ncert try to understand all the concept then only you take this book why because there will be repetition especially in first part physical geography and gc leong book has two parts one first physical geography second climatology okay that climatology part is important for prelims examination so what we can do is with this gc leong the second half of this book second half of this book is relevant to our prelims examination so gc leong is only for prelims examination gc leong book is only for prelims examination and so the first part first half first half largely physical geography of the world fundamentals of physical geography 11 standard ncert many almost 80% things will be repeating this book is also good visually because colorful diagrams colorful letters are used okay so padhne mein interest aata hai it will be interesting for reading also but again i am telling you second half is only relevant to our examination for prelims examination in second half different regions of the world are described the climate of different regions of the world human habitations their occupation cultural aspect demographic aspect are mentioned for example africa so they are talking about southern africa or eastern africa western africa these regions they are describing there it is relevant to only prelims examination because just now we talked about this in mains there is no such syllabus topic right yes now after this many times students ask that whether we have to read majid hussain book let me clearly say here that majid hussain book is for geography optional students only there is no need to read for general studies geography part to read this majid hussain book indian geography or khullar many times student start reading khullar itna bada book hai okay so that is for optional subject geography optional paper too for that there is khullar for that there is majid hussain why gs you are reading this there is no requirement okay so limit your preparation with limited resources and give multiple revisions this is the success mantra of this examination limited resources multiple revisions that will only help you crack this examination okay so this one now other important resource that you should keep handy is atlas okay so student atlas oxford or black swan okay any of you any of these two you can buy this oxford and atlas reading map reading is important activity for prelims examination okay and you should start this from the first day itself it should be part of your preparation okay so इसको अलग से नहीं लेना है इट इज पार्ट ऑफ योर सिलेबस इट इज पार्ट ऑफ योर प्रिपरेशन स्ट्रेटेजी फॉर ज्योग्राफी एंड स्पेसिफिकली फॉर प्रिलिम्स एग्जामिनेशन एंड इन एडिशन टू दिस करंट अफेयर्स करंट अफेयर्स ओके सो हियर द हिंदू न्यूज पेपर इज रिलेवेंट 
along with that those places that are in news suppose some river some lake some pilgrimage place also or any particular physical feature is in news you should mark it on a map you should find some description of that feature on the internet or that relevant newspaper and note down in your notes this is the strategy for geography prelims examination mapping part okay from current affairs what you have to do mapping part it is very very important and i would say classroom notes especially for mains examination especially for mains examination because here at lukman ias i will be providing you classroom dictation in every lecture for each and every topic if you talk uh, let's say to any previous year, previous batch foundation batch student they will explain you they will show their notes also how you know in a lucid language in a in a very descriptive manner we are providing dictation in the classroom okay and this is very important for your mains examination for writing answers this is very important now i want let's say uh, you to ask any question related to geography preparation that you are having current affairs and duration yes first of all i will address his query okay gc leong second half is related to different regions of the world see second half means there is complete division of the, the let's say in in index itself there is division section a section b something like that okay yes the whole portion is important because all the descriptions of different regions of the world that is relevant to prelims examination you give multiple revisions to that part only yes now other question that student is asking here current affairs what should be the duration of current affairs to be covered yes and this is now emerging question you know upsc used to ask question from the current affairs for last one year only but what we are witnessing the trend here is they are mixing it with contemporary affairs also contemporary goes back to 2 years 3 years also okay so for safe side for safe side what you can do is one point five that is eighteen months that is eighteen months so you can start your preparation of current affairs now and almost for next mains up to next mains it will be more than fifteen months it will be more than 15 months if you start from may month suppose april or may month it will be for next september october so that till that time you will cover majority of the current affairs so that is sufficient okay this duration yes any other question sir atlas should be of oxford or any other publication oxford or black swan either of these two black swan yes black swan publication okay orient orient black swan that one yes yes orient black swan yes correct sir yes tell me which website we have to sorry ministry, ministry websites see ministry websites uh, i would say for geography it is not relevant for environment and ecology i would say for ministry of environment uh, we can refer to that website but for geography it is not important yes now this is how for gs foundation batch we are going to proceed for next let's say 40 lectures will be there around 40 lectures for geography this is going to be very uh, we can say major module of your preparation and we have provided you in detailed manner what things are we are going to cover here within chapters like geomorphology within that what things we are going to learn 
in which sessions we are going to learn okay we'll provide this timetable to you in the in the start itself so that you are prepared to deal with this syllabus okay you will also simultaneously start reading ncrt this syllabus topic see geomorphology is the major part of our syllabus and the main concepts theories are also there of geography and it becomes very difficult so uh, we have dedicated more time for this part see around 10 sessions are for geomorphology only then other important part is climatology here are, are also many concepts are there again around 6 to 8 sessions are 8 sessions are for climatology only okay then again oceanography this is physical geography of world now immediately we will learn about physical geography of India next so that simultaneously Sara physical geography it will be covered complete physical geography then the economic geography the resources and industries for world as well as India together we will combine here okay so for mains examination as well as prelims we will prepare like this and ultimately the contemporary issues current affairs will cover in the end also some important issues from geography perspective in current affairs okay so for example global warming climate change it is also part of geography also part of environment section but also geography so why two session is given for secondary sector industry? Sorry? Which one? Secondary, yes, yes, yes. Because we have to cover many industries here, manufacturing sector. Okay, so so many industries are there, food processing industry, then iron and steel industry is there, aluminium industry is there. So we have to find the locational factors of all these industries. Okay. So that's why two sessions. Okay, it will take more time. Understood? Is this clear now? Okay, so now let us move on to next part of our syllabus, environment section. Yes. Ecology and environment. Many times student do not understand what is included here. We will take all the body classes in one go only. Yes, in one go only. We will not divide the syllabus. Sir, because that routine class from 13th of June. Uh, See, may, in, during the foundation batch, many times you have to give more efforts, more time here. There will be simultaneous two lectures also. Okay, one in morning, one in afternoon, but not throughout 11 months for certain time period. Okay, the query that you ask uh, next month, Ansari sir's ethics model is also there. So that will be simultaneous with geography. From next Monday, geography part is starting. Next month, again, ethics module will start simultaneously. Okay, so, but this will not be year long process. Okay, in between, the, there will be simultaneous two classes in the same day. Fine, because see, 11 month is very short time window for preparation also and for delivery in the classroom also so extra efforts are required from both side okay from your side also from classroom side also environment and ecology see since 2012 and 13 this has become the major part of prelims as well as mains examination see environment and ecology is the branch of geography it is nothing but the essential part of geography. Those having geographical geography optional subject, there is separate chapter of environmental geography. Right? So basically it is environment is part of geography. But it has been made separate distinct part of our syllabus, prelims as well as mains. Why? Can you tell me why? Yes? Anyone? Yes, environmental impact or simply we can say that in the public discourse, the environment subject is hotly debated. 
be it related to international relations or global you know uh, actions that are there against the climate change climate change is in news since last two decades a lot global warming and basically the impact of global warming on human and other we can say natural processes phenomenon it is visible nowadays more and because of that we need, we need to understand how these processes are happening along with that we should also understand the problem of environmental pollution water pollution air pollution land pollution noise pollution radioactive pollution soil pollution basically these are impacting us in day to day life we observe that if you are living in delhi what happens in winter everyone knows right the problem of air pollution if we are talking about water drinking water condition in delhi whether you will drink any water in delhi or you will let's say try to have the packaged water or even when we go to let's say restaurant we will try to have packaged water only this is the situation the problem of water pollution air pollution it has aggravated in recent times and it is very important part of civil services why because you are going to be the policy makers policy implementers government policy implementer and here onwards you will be also be part of let's say whatever the policy making towards climate change biodiversity conservation as well as we can say dealing with this environment pollution one more thing that you should understand this is let's say especially in prelims examination its weightage increased why since 2013 only the forest exam ha huh, very good so prelims examination is common to indian forest exam uh, service also along with civil service so of course there should be some scope to you know test their knowledge in their domain so ye ek reason hai this is also one of the reason to increase weightage of number of question from this part of see what is the syllabus general issues on environmental ecology biodiversity and climate change that do not require subset subject specialization it is clearly mentioned there should be understanding of this issues at surface level there should not be any specialization required so understanding the concepts in ecology what is ecosystem what are ecosystem functions what are the ecosystem services dif different terminologies are involved there understanding biodiversity threats to biodiversity biodiversity conservation national parks wildlife sanctuaries tiger reserves that this is what we have to learn here pollution related climate change these concepts we have to learn here okay so this is prelims part look at the syllabus in mains examination conservation environmental pollution and degradation environmental impact assessment okay so it is little bit different from the prelims examination different in a sense environmental pollution specifically emphasized in mains examination environmental impact assessment specifically mentioned eia it is many times in news especially for development projects so the trade off that we observe between economic development projects and environmental protection getting clearance environmental clearances for these projects has become major concern okay and many a times there is you know wrong eia is done environmental impact assessment and because of that environment degradation happens threat to wildlife habitat happens and this is not good so environment impact assessment what is the meaning of this what is the process at the current affairs draft eia guidelines or draft eia uh, norms rules were notified in 2020 it was in news in 2021 it was asked in mains examination immediately so current affairs related aspects are also relevant here 
environmental pollution it includes water pollution air pollution noise pollution or different other aspects related to pollution ground water pollution is also major concern okay so climate change is also part of mains related syllabus biodiversity conservation is also part of syllabus okay so what is the nature of questions briefly we'll have a look at this from a prelims related part and mains related part so which book is good for this topic sorry which book is good for this topic which book is good for this yes we'll talk about books once we get to know the nature of questions after that we'll talk about books also okay yes 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 see once this lecture is complete no you will get the complete idea of all this subject ओके दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आप एंड तक देखिए इसको ओके यू वेट फॉर इट बिकॉज दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अंडरस्टैंडिंग फॉर नेक्स्ट इलेवन मंथ्स हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू प्रोसीड इन 2021 एग्जामिनेशन सी वेटेज ऑफ एनवायरनमेंट इट इज मोर देन ज्योग्राफी प्रीलिम्स एग्जामिनेशन वी आर टॉकिंग इन मेन्स ज्योग्राफी वेटेज इज मोर आई विल टॉक अबाउट दैट ट्वेंटी टू क्वेश्चन थर्टी क्वेश्चन ट्वेंटी टू so almost around 15 to 20 questions every year are asked from environment section so it is one of the most important part of prelims examination okay now the nature of questions again ncert based conceptual understanding current affairs trend based upsc ka trend jo hai samajhna hai we have to understand the trend accordingly we have to prepare also yes some examples we will talk about see this i will give you book list everything i will talk about that but ncert based questions in case of which one of the following bio geochemical cycles the weathering of rocks is the main source of release of nutrients to enter the cycle so in school level in 10th standard i guess biology we learn about carbon cycle nitrogen cycle phosphorus cycle surface cycle for bio geochemical including hydrological cycle water cycle hai na yes so from that aspect see here seven standard ncert and 12 standard ncert biology so this 12th standard ncert biology chapter 14 clearly mentions that the natural reservoir of phosphorus is rock which contains phosphorus in the form of phosphates so phosphorus cycle has main source of phosphorus from the weathering of rocks so this cycle is mentioned in the ncert and you can see here rock minerals weathering then it enters into cycle the main source of phosphorus into phosphorus cycle is weathering of rocks it's clearly mentioned in ncert सिंपल क्वेश्चन अदर क्वेश्चन लुक एट दिस वॉट इज ब्लू कार्बन कॉन्सेप्ट बेस्ड क्वेश्चन डिफरेंट मीनिंग्स टर्मिनोलॉजीज आर देर ब्लैक कार्बन वॉट इज ब्लैक कार्बन वेन वी बर्न द फॉसिल फ्यूएल दैट रिमेनिंग कार्बन इज ब्लैक कार्बन फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू बर्न द कोल द एश दैट इज रिमेनिंग और द सूट दैट इज देयर सो ऑफकोर्स दैट इज ब्लैक कार्बन वॉट इज ब्लू कार्बन or green carbon sometimes it is also mentioned as green carbon blue carbon is nothing but the carbon captured by oceans and coastal ecosystems see oceans are sequestering the carbon in terms of absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and there are so many green plants algae phytoplanktons in the oceans they are using that for photosynthesis process okay and they are storing this carbon that carbon is blue carbon now blue blue yo yo hani singh ka gana bhi aa gaya tha usse bhi logic laga lagte hai you can use that logic also simply it is carbon captured by oceans and see other things do not talk about oceans or water you can use that logic also eliminate remaining three logically one is answer and that is true that is correct so concept different terminologies that are used in the environment section 
करंट अफेयर्स बेस्ड क्वेश्चन सी दिस क्वेश्चन इट इज डायरेक्टली फ्रॉम न्यूज पेपर ओके एंड दैट इज द हिंदू न्यूज पेपर वी हैड कवर्ड दिस इन द हिंदू न्यूज पेपर एनालिसिस लेक्चर वीडियोज लेट मी टेल यू दैट एवरी डे एट मॉर्निंग टेन ओ क्लॉक आई माई सेल्फ इज टेकिंग दीज लेक्चर्स सिंस लास्ट टू इयर्स विदाउट एनी इंटरप्शन सिंस लास्ट टू इयर्स द हिंदू न्यूज पेपर एनालिसिस इज बिंग डन सो इट विल बी हेल्पफुल फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू इट इज इंक्लूडेड इन द फाउंडेशन ब्लैच इट इज ऑल्सो अवेलेबल फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट ऑन यूट्यूब चैनल ओके एवरी डे वी आर अपलोडिंग दिस वीडियो एंड वी हैव कवर्ड दिस लेट मी टेल यू हाउ लुक एट दिस क्वेश्चन स्टेटमेंट स्टेटमेंट वन यूनाइटेड नेशन कैपिटल डेवलपमेंट फंड एंड आर्बर डे फाउंडेशन हैज रिसेंटली ऑर्गेनाइज रिकोगनाइज हैदराबाद एज ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी ट्री सिटी ऑफ द वर्ल्ड लुक एट द नेम ऑफ दिस इंस्टीट्यूशन यू एन कैपिटल डेवलपमेंट फंड एंड आर्बर डे फाउंडेशन सेकेंड हैदराबाद वॉज सेलेक्टेड फॉर रिकोगशन फॉर द ईयर फॉलोइंग द कमिटमेंट टू ग्रो एंड मेंटेन अर्बन फॉरेस्ट हाउ टू टेक इनपुट फ्रॉम न्यूज पेपर look at this exactly this was the page slide this article from newspaper hyderabad wins global tree status the hindu newspaper 19th february 2021 okay and we had covered this clearly key points i have i highlighted here in this ppt hyderabad declared as one of the tree cities of the world the tag is given by Arbor Day Foundation and Food and Agriculture Organization FAO what is the name given in first so it is correct or incorrect incorrect, incorrect statement second thing look at this status okay <clears throat> look at this article first of all see the state government harita haram program and its urban forest park plan for this plan or project it has received this status so urban forestry conservation of urban forest for this purpose it is given look at this second statement selected for the recognition commitment to grow and maintain urban forest so the second statement is correct so this is how we should take input from current affairs and newspaper for environment section okay understood now yes now other types of question like upsc trend okay <clears throat> questions based on medicinal and industrial applications of plants and herbs in 2019 there was question recently there was a growing awareness in our country about importance of himalayan nettle because it is found to be sustainable source of its application it is mentioned it is asked look at this year question which of which one of the following is used preparing natural mosquito repellent it is also question from general knowledge gk if you are having mosquito mosquito repellent cream at your home and if you are curious to know its ingredients it mentions about this lemon grass the ingredients of lemon grass le lemon grass are used for manufacturing of this mosquito repellent now it may not be mentioned in any reference book for your environment section it is in current ha huh. so it may be in current affairs or general reading of newspaper you know general awareness hota hai na so as a upsc civil service aspirant you keep your senses open you keep your ears eyes open but only take that information that is relevant okay otherwise it will be very difficult right so it will be very difficult to remember the things so only relevant things you should keep in your mind then again tr trend related food chain related question they are asking so many question this year they asked one question on detritus food chain and ek one question on we can say normal primary they are asking primary producers in food chain so we are going to learn about different types of food chains different organisms that are there examples in food chain 
okay so simple it is again we can say trained based why we are saying trained based see they have asked in 2013 related to detritus or known as decomposers because they start the detritus food chain so similar kind of question was asked again this year also pangolin was in news last year why it was in news when this pandemic started sorry yes coronavirus very good yes so when this coronavirus started spreading around the world there was one theory which suggested this coronavirus first transferred from fruit eating bats to pangolin and due to illegal trade of this pangolin it spread to humans because the meat of this pangolin is considered very delicious it is illegally traded for this and from pangolins human infected this is one of the theory of origin of coronavirus that's why it was in use but UPC did not ask this UPC asked the nature or behavior of pangolin see to reduce the chance of being captured by the predators which of the above organisms rolls up and protects or protect their vulnerable parts this is their behavior protective behavior and which of these animals hedgehog marmot pangolin so in general about pangolin that was in news so current affairs booklets of all institutions they covered about pangolin but what about remaining two this created the dilemma okay and let me tell you what happened when this prelims examination wa was there on Sunday new next Sunday in the Hindu newspaper there was one article talking about this hedgehog and that article in the Hindu newspaper clearly mentioned that hedgehog rolls up when it finds any threat threat to its life it rolls up its body it was clearly mentioned it was very unfortunate for your aspirants who gave this examination and later or after one week itself this was in news okay but still it this this information is important for you next time other feature other feature of that animal can be asked so simply we should find let's say humne photo bhi add kiya see how it rolls hedgehog there it is scaly animals okay un kaate hote hai uske upar body ke upar same is case for pangolin it rolls up okay so predator is not able to you know kill it or eat it but what about this marmot these marmots are burrowing animals like rabbits or rats okay but they are larger in size but they do not roll up when there is threat they run into their burrows when there is threat simply they are not rolling up like this so that's why one and three was the correct answer a little bit difficult but how to take input from current affairs from environment section this is we should understand fine so uh, baki ke questions uh, har ek question mein hame dekhna zaruri nahi hai we should understand here that the nature of question is from both conceptual understanding NCRT based as well as current affairs based okay now quickly we'll also have a look at mains related questions oh it is internal security related just a moment okay we have not included those questions I guess last, I think, last. no this is for prelims examination geography <clears throat> fine so now what we'll do okay I will explain about the questions also see the questions that are asked from the mains perspective they largely focus on environment pollution 
they largely focus on climate change and EIA specific topic is their environment impact assessment so that part as well as the conservation conservation recently cheetah reintroduction project was in use kuno palpur national park of madhya pradesh that has been chosen site for cheetah reintroduction hai na so simply from that aspect we should understand what are the issues involved in such kind of reintroduction project this is part of conservation major and the issues arising out of such reintroduction there can be direct question on this okay forest conservation <laughs> sorry which means you have to use the for ecological question i will talk about that i will talk about that now okay so such kind of questions are asked in the mains examination book list सेवन स्टैंडर्ड जोग्रफी एंड सी आर टी आवर एनवायरमेंट नेम ऑफ द एनसीआर टी आवर एनवायरमेंट बेसिक्स ऑफ एनवायरमेंट आर कवर्ड हियर इन सेवन स्टैंडर्ड एनसीआर टी बॉक्सेस गिवन इन एनसीआर टी अप टू टेन स्टैंडर्ड दे आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर फिल्म्स एग्जामिनेशन यूनिक काइंड ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन इज मैंशन इन द बॉक्सेस small small boxes colorful boxes are there in ncert okay that is important for prelims examination 12th standard biology last three chapters are related to environment section must for any student to read first of all these ncert chapters okay yes seven standard complete book 12th standard biology ncert last three chapters they specifically deal with ecology environment section okay here after specific chapter of 11th standard biology ncert and 7th chapter why i have added this this year upsc asked so many question from taxonomy the animal classification taxonomy up till now no one was you know preparing this with attention but upsc is mentioning names of different animal kingdoms in the questions phylum annelida phylum cynoderma such kind of names they are mentioning how do we understand that okay what are the characteristics of these animals which animals are included that we do not understand that's why these chapters from these chapters what needs to be studied first of all different animal kingdoms which animals are included there and their important characteristics this is relevant to our environment and ecology section and now reference books see this is you know very very standard that uh, we should follow here yes yes this is what i am writing theek hai ha this is what i am writing i have given oblique that means yeah. either of them not both yeah. Yeah. yes either of yeah. them only i will give you advantages disadvantages also first of all let me tell you that shankar ias is established name in ecology and environment since last 10 years so its book is comprehensive it covers majority of topics and as it is having some kind of you know trend keeping in mind of this examination it is giving pinpointed information okay but what is advantage of pmf is very very comprehensive book comprehensive in terms of vast coverage of information 
वास्ट कवरेज ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन सो मेनी थिंग्स आर कवर्ड दे आर रिलेवन टू आवर एग्जामिनेशन आई एम नॉट सेइंग दैट बट सो मेनी थिंग्स आर कवर्ड इन दैट बुक अदर एडवांटेज इट इज कलरफुल बुक्स सो मेनी फोटोग्राफ्स कलरफुल फोटोग्राफ्स आर इंक्लूडेड देयर इट मेक्स इट वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग आई एम टेलिंग यस यस ओके बट वस वन डिसएडवांटेज इज दैट it is randomly organized the index is not good here see this is advantage for shankar ayas it is well organized in terms of matter beech mein kahin pe bhi kuch bhi jod diya hai pmf ayas mein basically it is not organized it is giving just bullet po- points and it is adding more information one by one one by one okay so sometimes student may find it difficult to you know grasp but shankar ayas is well organized book well organized i am saying so if you find environment in ecology let's say not interesting subject read pmf ayas because the kind of let's say colorful or that that information in different uh, color codes it is given it will make it interesting but if you are having let's say some previous knowledge you are interested read shankar ayas okay 90% of the information is overlapping it is covered in both books so simply what you should do visit book store look at both books have a glance at it and the one you liked you buy i would not say one is preferable over other okay both are good books fine either of you let's say them you can buy this it is not the problem in addition to that uh, let me also tell you <clears throat> in lukman ayas again we will have the dictation of important notes related to mains examination especially in classroom explanation of concepts and dictation of mains related descriptive notes this will help you to understand from prelims as well as mains perspective see reading books is fine but many times you will not understand concept like eutropication suppose the concept is explained in the book they will explain directly in a descriptive format in one paragraph but how will you understand actually what is happening there you should understand that from flow chart how these nutrients are entering into water bodies what is actually happening in water bodies then only you will understand that concept okay so simply uh, but yes in addition to is uh, and in comparison with geography environment can be studied with self study if you have interest but many a times students do not have interest for them again it is very important to join class okay so yes these books are very comprehensive they are written according to examination pattern okay upsc examination pattern only in addition to that if you are interested in further reading there is one book for ugc graduation level studies written by barucha there is tiger photograph of tiger on the front page cover page okay so <clears throat> let me tell you that when we used to prepare uh, for you, let's say upsc examination at that time these notes were not there shankar ayas and all these things okay so at that time you used to refer to these standard books and they are very well explained actually kafi acche se wo explain karte additional information hota hai basically these books reference books they have comprehensive awareness give awareness about environment section these notes will limit your environmental perspective to upsc examination but again you don't have to do ma or phd okay so you have to get more marks so classroom learning along with these notes will be sufficient for you any question from environment section yes class notes and ncert are not sufficient sorry 
I would not say it is sufficient because for prelims examination, you need more information. See, what I am saying here is, in class note, you will also get printed booklet at Lukman IS. Yes, it is static part. Here, in addition to this, you have to also supplement with current affairs for environment section. In current affairs, largely, you should focus on different, let's say, national parks, tiger reserves, Ramsar sites, UNESCO sites, or simply wildlife sanctuaries, which are in news, current affairs, protected areas. Okay. These printed booklets, class notes, will not be giving you complete information for prelims examination. Let me tell you that no class gives like this. Because you, if you refer to this book, no, so much of information is there. Okay, and it is very difficult to give that in limited number of lectures in classroom. So the focus can be here in understanding the concepts. Every concept will be explained. Every concept that is given in these notes will be explained in the classroom. And the dictation for mains examination syllabus. Those notes, they that is not included here. Let me tell you what we are going to dictate in classroom. It is not there. They are limited to prelims examination only. They are limited to prelims examination only. But let me tell you, weightage for this section in prelims is more. For mains examination, there will be only two to three questions. That means weightage is for 25 to 40 or 30 marks only for environment section in GS3 paper. Out of 250 GS3 paper, only 25 to 30 or maximum 40 marks will be asked from ecology and environment. So more weightage for this section is in prelims examination, not in mains examination. That's why you should consider either of this as your Bible. It is very clear. I am not, let's say, worried here, say that in Lukman IS, I am telling you different class notes. Let, surely, if Lukman IS notes are perfect or better than this, it's my responsibility to guide you in right direction. And I will tell you which notes of Lukman IS are best in the market. That I will also tell you. Okay, like for example, in class notes, whatever we are going to write, you will not find those inputs outside. That is for sure. So you complement different study materials in your preparation. Okay, yes, any question? Now moving on to the next part of our syllabus and it relates to internal security. Now here onwards, two aspects, internal security and disaster management they are limited to only men's examination of your uh, men's examination syllabus okay so internal security gs3 paper of your men's examination this is the syllabus it talks about linkages between development and spread of extremism like for example naxalism maoism that is spreading development and extremism how they are linked then Role of external state and non-state actors in creating challenges to internal security. And here you should learn about different threats to internal security, challenges to internal security. Terrorism is there. Insurgency in Northeast India. Naxalism in Central and Eastern India. And we can say militancy in Jammu and Kashmir. These four important challenges we will learn here. State and non-state. External state means from external foreign country or its government, that is state. When we say non-state, other terrorist organizations, they are non-state actors. Non-state actors means they are not part of government. They are independent organizations. Like for example, the, the terrorist organizations based in Pakistan, terrorist organizations based in Iraq, so basically, they are non-state actors. But when we say state actors, so suppose there is 
some kind of uh, threat from Pakistan government itself or Pakistan government is supporting these organizations directly or indirectly. So it is also a challenge for us. Then challenges to internal security through communication networks. This is emerging threat related to cyber security. Okay, so role of social media, media, social networking sites in internal security. Nowadays, these terrorist organizations are using WhatsApp, Facebook or these social networking sites to spread extremism, to spread fundamentalism. Okay, so this is becoming more challenge. Basics of cyber security. It includes cyber attacks, cyber warfare and how government is preparing to deal with these attacks at the same time next what more needs to be done all these then basic terminologies are there what is critical information infrastructure what is critical information infrastructure what is national cyber policy cyber uh, let's say security policy is there 2013 it's high, let's say important points all these will be covered here money laundering and its prevention it is also very important because it has linkages with organized crime also next security challenges and their management in border areas so india is having border with different neighboring countries each border with respective countries are having different challenges for example with china very high territory uh, we can say mountains are there harsh climate is there Along with that, we should understand it is undemarcated boundary is there. With Pakistan, there is problem of drug smuggling, arms smuggling, insurgency, militancy in North uh, Jammu and Kashmir. This is the problem. Okay, so we should find out these challenges and their management. That is there. Linkages of organized crime with terrorism. Organized crime, for example, drug smuggling human trafficking or arms smuggling they are part of organized crime and uh, illegal wildlife trade this is organized crime and they are linked with terrorism why because terrorist organizations are basically using this organized crime for funding funding purpose so basically they are using this and in return they provide protection to these criminals there is linkage between these two and ultimately various security forces agencies and their mandate for example CAPF Central Armed Police Forces BSF is there CISF CRPF or Indo-Tibetan Border Police is there Assam Rifles is there basically what is their mandate during peace time during war time okay so we have to uh, understand these details of this uh, what you can say <clears throat> syllabus topic now briefly we'll have look at what type of question that is asked see these are the questions so this is syllabus sorry security forces these are the see there are two types of questions asked in internal security one will be basic understanding of all these challenges its causes, its implications, manifestations and what government is doing, what needs to be done. Basic. Second is current affairs based. Only two types of questions are asked. See all types of questions. All questions you can see. They will fall in these two categories. First one, what are the determinants of left wing extremism in eastern part of, Ind part of India? Basic understanding of this challenge of Naxalism. Second, what strategy should government of India or civil administration should adopt to counter this? Threat? Once you understand this issue, this challenge, you will be easily writing answer to this. Analyze internal security challenges and trans-border crimes along Myanmar, Bangladesh, Pakistan borders and discuss the role played by various security forces. One thing you are understanding here in mains examination questions, they directly relate to your syllabus topic. 
so syllabus needs to be kept i generally tell student to keep three copies of syllabus with you one at your study table at home other at your study table in your library and third should be one more copy in your bag when you are moving around okay when you are going from library to home or you are coming to classroom also in classroom also you should have copy okay and that will help you throughout your preparation always it should be with you so now current affairs questions current affairs based question see here government of india has recently strengthened the anti terrorism laws by amending upa act and ni act analyze the changes in the context of pre prevailing security environment while discussing scope and reasons for opposing upa by human rights in 2019 both acts were amended by government both acts were amended and it was very much in news even at lukman is we had in detail discussed these two laws these amendments in ed lectures let me tell you that on every sunday editorial discussions lecture is conducted at lukman is foundation batch students are allowed to sit in that batch also okay there all mains related current issues relevant to our syllabus they are in depth discussed analyzed and a, a view point a broad balanced view point is given to you on all those issues from mains perspective i am telling you okay so there all these current affairs issues are discussed in detail okay so you and then their printed material is given to you on those issues so every week you are getting this printed material on current affairs for mains perspective ed lectures okay yes so this is how you should prepare now you can see internal security challenges analyze the multi dimensional challenges posed by external state and non state actors to the internal security of india as if they are writing syllabus topic as if they are writing syllabus topic directly right and the discuss majors required to combat threat see that's why i am telling you there are only two types of questions one syllabus topic prepare it thoroughly basics of all these challenges and second current affairs clear right and it is only for mains not prelims so simply you should prepare from the mains perspective only now the book list ha huh. yes this is important in mains examination gs3 paper out of 250 marks 50 marks are dedicated for internal security there will be two questions for 10 markers and two questions for 15 markers so total 50 marks are dedicated for internal security okay and this is uh, more or less fixed okay every year they ask 50 marks questions from internal security so comparatively we talk about environment or science and tech it is having more weightage okay so Uh, i would say 18 months we we keep this now uh, the fixed criteria for current affairs for all modules of our syllabus 18 months is the standard okay but if you are not able to cover then one year minimum and if you have ample time two years you can cover okay but yes 18 months is the standard okay <clears throat> book list i would suggest two books here one book is challenges to indian security uh, in, in let's say internal security of india by arun kup kumar he is ips officer arun kumar publication also i will tell here magro publication magro hill publication it is written 
according to our syllabus only directly syllabus topics are the names of the chapters so if you start from first page to last page simply discovering all the syllabus and it is explaining basic challenges i i told you two types of questions the first one is completely covered by these books or i am writing or okay there is one book related to this internal security of india challenges to internal security of india as well as disaster management in the same book oxford publication it is written by mr raza he is also ips officer either of this book are sufficient 80% of the content is overlapping so what you can do visit bookstore have look at both books the one you like you start reading okay so but i would prefer the first one okay and this is standard book in the market for our examination second important source is current affairs current affairs and here first of all the hindu newspaper ed lectures editorial discussion okay editorial discussion ed lectures the hindu newspaper daily reading and here you should also refer to website of idsa its name is changed i guess uh, manohar parikkar uh, the name is given to a former defense minister manohar parikkar okay the idsa website some good articles are written on this website expressing views by the experts experts like retired army officials uh, or the other armed forces officials expert of those members of our armed forces they write on this website good articles are written related to challenges to internal security okay so this is current affairs this is sufficient if you are not reading daily the hindu newspaper either you can attend the video lectures or you can refer to yearly compilation at the end of the year also if you attend the lecture you are providing it's more than sufficient more than sufficient you will understand the significance of that classroom learning why because see when you are reading that article by yourself and when the faculty is explaining that article in the classroom of course there will be more value addition you will understand that article in depth more aspects related to that article because you may not be knowing background of that issue the faculty will tell you 10 years back something happened related to this issue a balanced opinion may be provided by the faculty on that issue in the classroom itself that's why it is always preferred you refer see it is uh, 30 minutes 40 minutes maximum 45 minutes lecture okay it's does not uh, let's say cover more than 1 hour so it will take very less time so don't worry about that your time time is very important starts at 4:00 morning 10 o'clock every day except sunday okay every day except sunday because sunday's newspaper analysis is done on monday and you will get the recorded video okay yes so any question from this internal security understood everything yes now lastly small part is there related to disaster management and you will be amused to find the syllabus what is written in syllabus the name is science disaster and disaster management nothing in detail given about this part okay so that means we have to understand it from previous year questions the nature of questions and accordingly we will find out what types of let's say what is the kind of preparation that we needs to do here related to disaster management so yes we have added this part look at these questions
there was one question related to landslide in geography just now we have seen describe various causes and effects of landslide mention the important components of national landslide risk management strategy see the difference there was focus only on causes here the question includes effects also the question includes way forward also what government is doing what needs to be done this is disaster management so that's why disaster and disaster management we have to learn about different disasters their causes their manifestation impact and the way forward how to reduce its impact how to have the let's say mitigation and adaptation measures in place what government is doing what more needs to be done this is what we need to learn in this part of our syllabus look at this discuss the recent measures initiated in disaster management by government of india departing from the earlier reactive approach current affairs based question i would say contemporary affair it's not specifically for one year or one and half year in recent times it is saying recent measures initiated by the government especially it is talking about present government the present government is having a very different approach towards disaster management it talks about proactive approach it talks about preventing and mitigating the impact of that disaster it talks about disaster risk reduction drr which is important feature of we can say international framework for disaster management okay there are two important framework hugo framework of disaster management it was from 2000 to 2015 now from 2015 to 2030 what is being implemented is sendai framework of disaster management sendai framework and according to that we have to adopt whatever the framework that government is having in india to deal with these these disasters so government is taking major major see here question describe various measures taken in india for disaster risk reduction before and after signing sendai framework for disaster risk reduction okay again it is current affairs based question right so some questions are basic question some questions are within same question there can be current affairs okay so you can see here the question on december 2004 tsunami brought havoc on 14 countries including india discuss the factors responsible for occurrence of tsunami and its effect on life same causes effect first part what is second part yes in the light of guideline describe the mechanism of preparedness this is the trend we know from previous year questions what to prepare we will prepare disasters causes impact and mitigation measures what government is doing what needs to be done as well as current affairs we can say or contemporary affairs so from this aspect we understand okay so how to prepare this okay just a moment hang over again ek bar usko bula dena amit ko bula dena ek minute jo abhi aaya tha usko so from this we have understood clearly that there are two types of question one basic as well as the other one is we can say current affairs based question okay so uh, the the kind of inputs that we should take from where the main concern here is the, it is it is basically related to we can say the book list there is no one book available specifically for disaster management rather i would say this 
Challenges to Internal Security book that I have suggested, there are two chapters in the end related to disaster management. So what you can do? In both, in both, in both they have included disaster management as one or two chapters in the end. So you read those chapters that will cover different types of disasters. In geography, you will learn different national, sorry, natural hazards. There you will learn about causes and impact. Okay. Now, in addition to that, how to prepare for current affairs, especially the government measures related to deal with that different disasters. Just a moment. Okay. See, there are different sources that you should refer here for disaster management. Okay, so Arun Kumar book is there that will have two chapters related to disaster management. Thereafter, NDMA website you should refer. National Disaster Management Authority website. So on that website, what you need to refer three aspects. One, National Policy on Disaster Management 2009. Directly download PDF, go through it. National Policy on Disaster Management 2009. Another important document is National Disaster Management Plan. 2019 again PDF you will find there on the website National Disaster Management Plan 2019 one more aspect that you should follow here Prime Minister's 15 point agenda for disaster risk reduction 15 point sorry 10 point not 15 point sorry Yes, 10 point, 10 point agenda for disaster reduction. Okay, these three important document you will find there. In addition to that, disaster wise, each disaster wise, there are NDMA guidelines. For example, to deal with tropical cyclones, there is separate disaster guidelines by NDMA. How to deal with that, what government is doing, what NDMA is doing. Okay, so disaster wise also there are different guidelines and this disaster management plan will have holistic approach to all different types of disasters. These two are bulky documents. So instead of reading in detail, first of all refer to index and find the relevance to our syllabus. Okay, find the relevance to our syllabus. Those things only should be read. Uh, read or simply we can say make notes out of it okay in addition to this you should find out important highlights of features of sendai framework disaster management sendai framework on disaster management okay now this is what we should prepare here and when we talk about the nature of questions they are asked, they ask about disaster and disaster management. Disaster management includes legal as well as institutional framework. Legal as well as institutional framework. What is legal framework in India? Which particular law deals with disaster management? Disaster Management Act 2005. Disaster Management Act 2005. It is important law in India dealing with all types of disasters. So legal framework, its highlights you should know the important legal mechanisms and institutional mechanism. Institutional mechanism. Government machinery to deal with disasters. So at national level, we have NDMA, National Disaster Management Authority.
At state level, we have SDMA, State Disaster Management Authority. At district level, we have District Disaster Management Authority. This institutional mechanism is given in this NDA, National Disaster Act 2005. So, basic institutional mechanism of disaster management in India, we should be prepared for this type of, uh, let's say, questions also. Okay. So, technical aspects, legal aspects, institutional aspects. So, all questions will revolve around this. All questions will revolve around this. Is this clear? Everyone? Okay, so <clears throat> in addition to that, of course, current affairs, class notes and current affairs. In class, I will explain you everything about different types of disasters, causes, impact. Along with that, I will also explain you what is disaster management cycle. Okay, disaster management cycle, understanding that is very important. What are different stages of this cycle before disaster happens, after disaster happens? Okay, so this is part of disaster management cycle and that needs to be understood properly. Then only you will understand what are the different mitigation and adaptation measures. There are different terminologies, disaster preparedness, disaster risk reduction, vulnerability and risk mapping, disaster uh, let's say preparedness is there, adaptation is there, rescue, response, all these terminologies, they relate to disaster. Okay, but weightage in our examination is very less. So, what you will do here? Cost benefit analysis. Only one 15 marker and one 10 marker will be asked in the examination. Weightage is only and only 25 marks, not more than that. Out of 250, only 25 marks are dedicated to disaster management. Okay, and this has not changed for let's say recent trend. Agar hum dekhte hai okay, so 25 marks, one 10 marker, one 15 marker. Okay, so comparatively less weightage is there, no? So you in your preparation also should give less weightage in your preparation in terms of the time you are investing. In terms of resources you are reading, you need not to read more than one book. Only one book is sufficient. Get acquainted with basic terminology. Thereafter, go through these documents of the government. What government is doing? You will get everything here. What government is doing? This second part of question. You will get everything here. And then we can say some international framework, legal. I will explain this in classroom. You will get the dictation in the classroom about all this. Sir, uh, you need to classroom. Which one? MBDM. Yes, I will, I will include this one also. Because this is part of way forward, no? Mm -hmm. What government is doing, what needs to be done. For each and every disaster, we are going to talk about this. Is this clear? Yes, online students, if you have any question, you can ask. As I had said, I hope you have everything, uh, let's say, related to how we are going to progress in next 11 months, how you should prepare for these modules for your UPC journey. Uh, <clears throat> yes, of course, uh, it will be a difficult journey. I would not say that it is a cakewalk. This is like misguidance. ऐसे नहीं बोलना चाहिए कोई भी क्लास में आपको पता है बहुत जगह पे बोल देंगे you will be IAS do this do that and you will be IAS this is not the cake walk simply it requires lot of hard work surely the faculty here is there to guide you in right direction but it demands more than hundred percent efforts from the candidate itself see it is coaching class coach is to guide you Coach is to manure your efforts, but coach will not help you to perform in the examination. It depends on how dedicated you are. 
so that's why in the end i will end with three p's many times i give motivational stories also in the classroom to keep you motivated this is also very important for you three p's are related to you have these three p's in your life and you will crack this examination why we are saying first of all passion passion in a sense that you need to be you know mad for this examination mad in terms of there should not be any diversion in your daily routine for next 18 months you should be you know like this wo ghoda hota hai na race ka usko aankhon pe aise lagaya hota hai so wo samne dekhe sirf usko koi aur diversion nahi chahiye it should be like this okay and you should be passionate for this examination then only you will be clearing this examination see there will be many diversion masi ke bete ka shaadi hai iska shaadi hai uska kuch hai iska birthday hai dost ka birthday hai there will be many diversions but you should be very careful here you need not to you know diverge from your preparation the second thing is that perseverance perseverance in a sense you need to put in sustained efforts do din 24 ghante padhai kiya uske uske baad 4 din sota raha this is not perseverance perseverance means you are keeping your time table fixed you are disciplined enough to have let's say follow that time table at the same time there will be you know ups and downs in this journey but you need to have those sustained efforts till the end till the end you should have that momentum in your preparation momentum okay ups and downs will be there but you should keep on fighting this is perseverance and ultimately i will say patience see patience is important why patience is important because इट इज लॉन्ग जर्नी एंड मेनी ए टाइम्स मैं बोलता हूँ ये साप सीढ़ी का खेल है साप सीढ़ी का खेल हमने बचपन में सबने खेला है एक सीढ़ी ऊपर लेके जाती है दूसरी लेके जाती है और वहां पर सांप काट लेता है वापस से हम पहले यहाँ पे आ जाते हैं राइट वी हैव प्लेड दैट गेम इन चाइल्डहुड सेम इज द केस मेनी टाइम्स वॉट विल हैपन ड्यू टू लैक ऑफ प्रिपरेशन यू मे फेल इन प्रिलिम्स और मेन्स एग्जामिनेशन और इट मे इवन हैपन दैट इन इंटरव्यू यू मे नॉट लेट से क्वालिफाई एंड अगेन यू हैव टू प्रिपेयर फ्रॉम द स्टार्ट एज अ क्लीन स्लेट अगेन बट दैट डज नॉट मीन एंड ऑफ यूर जर्नी ओके सिंपली यू हैव टू कीप फाइटिंग एंड दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर दिस जर्नी This is not like छः महीने प्रिपेयर कर लिया आउटपुट मिल गया ओके फॉर नेक्स्ट एटीन मंथस यू हैव टू कीप पेशेंस यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट देर विल बी फेल्यूर फेल्यूर इज पार्ट ऑफ दिस प्रोसेस लेट मी टेल यू यू सी द सक्सेस रेशो ओके दैट्स वाई द फर्स्ट पॉइंट वाई मोटिवेशन रखने के लिए वाई बहुत स्ट्रांग होना चाहिए ओके okay. so th uh, this patience is very important quality and that will help you to become good civil servant also after cracking this examination this will help you a lot because you are going to face different kind of people as a dm as a district collector you will be facing poor farmer also explaining his problem you will be facing any mla or mp shouting at you also okay so you need to have patience you should have let's say you know balancing of your emotions and everything okay so that's why fine so zyada bore nahi karunga theek hai yes if you have any question so you can ask yes internal security by ashok kumar ips book is okay sir yes yes that is okay that is the book we are talking and it includes disaster management topics also arun kumar i think it was 
अरुण कुमार अरुण कुमार अरुण कुमार सॉरी अशोक कुमार एग्जैक्टली आई एम नॉट रिमेम्बरिंग द नेम बट इट इज मैग्रो हिल पब्लिकेशन फॉर श्योर ओके लेस अगेन वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन यस यस इट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन वेदर वी शुड मेक नोट्स ऑफ शंकर आयस और पी एम आई एस लेट मी टेल यू दैट दीज बुक्स देमसेल्स आर नोट्स दीज बुक्स देमसेल्स आर नोट्स दे आर नॉट बुक्स बिकॉज दे आर रिटर्न इन नोट्स मैनर ओनली बुलेट फॉर्म ओके एंड ईच एंड एवरी इंफॉर्मेशन इज इंपॉर्टेंट इट विल बी काइंड ऑफ री राइटिंग बुक इफ यू मेक नोट्स आउट ऑफ इट सो मेनी इंफॉर्मेशन यू हैव टू राइट इन द नोट्स सो इंस्टेड ऑफ दैट हाईलाइट अंडरलाइन स्टार मार्क द इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट फॉर रिविजन पर्पज ओके इट शुड बी वेरी क्लियर हाँ वॉट एवर द क्लास नोट्स यू आर गोइंग टू हैव इन द क्लास रूम फॉर मेन्स परस्पेक्टिव यू हैव टू राइट दैट यू हैव टू रिवाइज दैट ओके yes anything else okay then let us stop if there is no question fine okay